Hi, this is Steve Bonacontri from SOA Consulting Services, continuing our Angle of Four tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about observables. Angle of Four has something we now call reactive programming, which is based on the observable model. It's cr for creating responsive, fast, event-driven applications where an observable event stream is pushed to its subscribers. Observable observer design pattern is used for the asynchronous programming. An observable is an object that streams elements from data source, that is a socket, an array, or UI events, one element at a time. It streams data to subscribers using a push model. The data pushed to the subscriber can be transformed on the way from the source to the subscriber by applying various operators. That is, as the data is getting streamed, you can map the data from one form to another. The streams can be canceled and you can be notified about the end of the stream. So the important thing to understand about this design pattern is it's a push model. There's a lot of capabilities um, with transforming the data, with uh, with 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 canceling streams, with notif with no notifications associated with the end of the stream. An observable could be cold. That is, it starts streaming data when some code calls subscribe on it, or hot. It starts streaming data even if there is no subscriber interested in receiving the data. We're going to be talking about cold streams or cold observables. An observer is an object that handles a data stream pushed by an observable. A stream that subscribes to an observable provides an observer object that knows what to do with the stream elements. For example, suppose I say let my subscription, which is of type subscription, equal to my observable dot subscribe my observer. You could also unsubscribe. Okay, so as an observable is streaming data, we can we can perform operations on the data. We could filter the data. We could we could cancel a stream, and we could notify the observer that the stream is complete. Okay, so an observable stream is basically mapping these elements, and each element that comes through to the stream, we can map it to a different element. So for example, let's suppose we had a an array streaming and we transformed it into JSON data and then that data had um, an ID and um, an ID of a person, an age, a name, a phone number, an address of the person, etc. We could map that data to a different JSON format which just had an ID and an age. And then we could filter that data by saying uh, the age is greater than 35 years old. So what we'd wind up with is some data that's transformed and filtered, and the observer would receive that data. Okay, so an observable stream emits the next element. It could throw an error. It could send signal that streaming is over. When I say it emit the next element, as the user's typing, character at a time it's emitting that next element into the stream you can receive all those elements as soon as they're um, emitted or you could use a deep bounds function and wait for several of them to appear before you grab the the the, the group of characters in the stream an observer callbacks functions they handle the next element of the observable. They handle errors of the observable. They handle end of stream notification. So from arrays to iterables and observables, 
you basically have these functions you can work with um, JavaScript methods for working with arrays one of them was map and you can apply a function to each array element the result is an array of the same size you could filter the data you can apply a function to each array element and have the result be an array of same size or less you could reduce it by producing an aggregate value from an array that is a single value okay so streams are a collection of given data to your application over time and there's different streams that we work with we work with iterables and iterators these treat an array as a collection of data that you can iterate through it's got a pull model like shopping cart array dot map you can you're basically iterating iterating through the array of elements and for each element converting it to JSON the result is an array of JSON you could have a book array and filter and say give me the price uh, give me the books where the price is greater than 30 you'd wind up with an array with a smaller size possibly a smaller size um, with books that cost more than $30 you can have a person array and reduce it by filtering it by um, operating an average weight function on it and in that scenario you'd wind up with a single number which is the average weight of the people okay then we also have a concept of a generator which is an iterable it, it turns a function into an iterator it's it's also has a pull model if you put an asterisk, asterisk in front of a function name, you turn it into a generator. And in that function uh, implementation, you could use the yield to denote different parts of the function that you want to execute to. The dot next will execute different pieces of the function. So you could say, put a yield in the middle of the function and say, you know, execute the first half of the function then execute the second half using the next operator. But observables are more advanced since it pushes data to the subscribers using the push model. So I'm going to talk about two examples. One of them is a basic um, event type of observable. And the other one is using observables by calling web services. So stay tuned for our next tutorial, which goes through these two code examples.